Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome, my friends. This is the Divine Phoenix Rising Tarot, and hey, I'm Zachary. Thank you guys for joining me here, and welcome to my table. So, friends, new and old, if you're new here, I typically go over channeled messages. We look at oracle cards and then move into tarot messages. If you're returning, it's good to see you guys again. I am doing things a little bit differently in this collective message. First of all, I've really missed all of you guys. I know it's been a minute since we've done a collective, so I'm really excited to do this message here for you guys. We do have a new moon in Leo tomorrow on the 4th. I'm, I'm filming this on the 3rd here. So moving into the new moon, always a great time to set intentions for what it is that we're wanting to move into. Going through the full moon, moving into the new moon, we've released what it is that we want to release and we're moving towards what it is we want to bring into our lives. So with this new moon in particular, being in Leo, um, and happy birthday everybody here, happy Leo season. The sun, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. So um, with Leo, this is, um, this is all about being authentic to yourself, being learning how to authentically love yourself as well, believing in yourself. So much of our lives from when we were children, most of us, I don't think anybody really gets through unscathed, but people are at different levels as far as getting back to their authentic magic. We as children are, we believe in ourselves. We believe in a great deal. We have uh, such an incredible imagination and imagination is very important. Einstein says it's more important than knowledge. Why? Because that's how we manifest. If you can't see it or experience it before it's here, that's a, that's a major component that's missing in your power and your ability to manifest, okay? To be the man master manifester that you are and can be. So at this time, this new moon, great time if you want to sit down, set intentions, I highly recommend it. Writing things out are always a great way to start bringing things into this reality, um, closing the gap there as far as time goes to, to manifest, um, especially with creative pursuits. So anything that, um, great time also actually, inner child and inner teen work at this time meditating with them asking them what it is that they hope to achieve in this life i feel like this is a great time to check in with those components of ourselves learn a bit more about ourselves heal start working on healing what may need to be healed and with their help bringing more imagination and our own power back into the here and now okay so um i do want to read this quote to you guys here and then we'll get into collective messages because I felt like this was so fitting for New Moon in Leo. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. And there's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born, we were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. This is by Marianne Williamson. One of my favorites. I actually have it on my fridge. So, okay. Um, I am going to move into channel messages here. I'm going to pull a couple Oracle cards and then we'll get into the piles. All right, my friends. I'm actually going to clear the space here one moment. Hmm. So right away, that's interesting. I'm not entirely sure what stone that is, but I'm being shown it's a clear, it looks like a quartz, um, but a great many tiny spinels, I guess. Um, it feels to me interesting. It feels to me like, like there's, there's a sharpness in consciousness. Okay, what does that mean? Softening... S 
softening to your own flow. Okay, there. I'm actually one second, you guys. I'm being shown a symbol here. I'm gonna wasn't anticipating this, so I'm gonna draw this out one second. Is that it? Yes, okay. What is this symbol for, Spirit? More. More. More patience, okay. What do we do with this symbol here, please, Spirit? And I'll show you guys here in a second. To be with it, what does that mean? Carry it with you, okay. Okay. All right, is this symbol active? No, okay. Is the symbol now active? Yes, okay. Lovely, okay. Um, wasn't expecting that this was going to happen here on camera, but here we go. So um, more patience is what this symbol is for and bringing in that like sharp consciousness, like I was saying, uh, I feel like the intention is to help soften our own aggression or expectation or lack of patience towards our own progress or process. Um, like I was saying about being a child back then, before the world starts beating things out of us in that way, we believe in ourselves for the most part, okay? We believe in ourselves uh, before we know how to walk. We start learning how to walk, knowing intrinsically we have that energy inside of us to learn. We know that we can do things, okay? There may be a learning curve on stuff, but we know that we can approach anything. Over time, we start to get a little bit rough around the edges, I think, and to become a, a bit impatient with ourselves too. Um, so this is to help with that. So the instruction was to carry it with you, to be with it. You can put this in a pocket, in a wallet, in a purse, whatever works for you. Feel free to pause the video here if you want to draw this out. I'll show the camera here. So more patience. And this is, um, this is activated, okay. So uh, love that, you guys. Actually, I love that message. Is there anything else here for the collective at this time, Spirit? Dynamic vector. Mm. So, um, so a vector in math is, um, what is it? Uh, direction and amplitude. It's both direction and um, basically energy that's behind that direction. So the dy dynamic vector here. What I'm getting is to not, to be flexible enough to change direction, to be dynamic in the direction you may be heading or even the amount of energy that you're putting into that direction. But to not ever let that fully stop, keep moving, right? Keep swimming is what I'm getting. There may be a change of course that's needed for some of you right now, and that's something that you'll be able to approach mm, with more of this patience here too, to help soften those edges. It's okay to change direction. It's okay to adjust how much energy you're putting into something, especially depending on where you are in your life, okay? Okay, thank you, Spirit. Anything else? No, okay. I love you too. All right.
Oh, that was fun. Okay, I love you, Collective. I'm gonna get some water here. Give me some dry mouth. I don't know if anybody else experiences that with um, channeling, but it gives me some dry mouth. So I do feel called to pull a couple Oracle cards here and then we'll move into piles, like I said. So Wild Unknown's um, archetype deck here. I'm gonna pull one card. One card here for Collective here, New Moon and Leo. What does the Collective need to know, please, Spirit? Oh, <laughs> I love that. Okay. So seed is what came out here. The seed, this is all about growth, expansion. Um, what you need or what you have inside of you is all you need. All you need is inside that seed, right? You already have in your genetics, in your blueprint, soul plan, however you want to look at that, the instructions, the direction on where to go, on how to heal, mm. on how to heal. So in the seed here, there is this bumping up against a growth edge. And I feel very much that's something that a lot of us are experiencing right now. There's a need right now to, to be calm, to find that inner peace and inner sanctuary. Mm and tap more into universal flow. The seed is fully tapped into universal flow. It has a blueprint genetically and it's following that blueprint with the right amount of nutrients, sun, water, nutrients in the soil. Obviously, you know, plants or we can grow different speeds or different ways, but the instructions are still there inside of us, okay? to grow, to do whatever we need to do or to be. So I do feel like there is a bit of a bumping up against a growth edge, so to speak, right now. Maybe feeling a bit of resistance. And I feel like this resistance in general that's happening is, is that um, remembering your own power. If you are being really harsh and critical with yourself right now, stop it. <laughs> you stop doing that. Um, please don't treat my friend that way. I know that there is an ample amount of that energy that's out there in the world for us all to experience. And the shadow will never fully disappear from this realm. But that doesn't mean that if everyone's jumping off a bridge, we also have to. Please be patient with yourself. Bring a heavy dose of compassion and grace into whatever your situation is right now that you are bumping up into that growth edge. You can get through this, you will get through this. This requires you to soften though, okay? I feel like that lion is both strong and soft, okay? Soft and cuddly. <laughs> Being the strength card on, on the tarot, um, is very much about taming that inner animal, anger, fire, with a gentle hand, okay? Okay, so Urban Crow um, Oracle here, please, Spirit. What do we have here for the collective? Commitment, interesting. So commitment. Um, I feel like this is, as we're talking about New Moon and Leo here, this is commitment to yourself. This is coming back to a place of, speaking of like original blueprints, coming back to a place of remembering, remember who you are, Simba. <laughs> exactly, Simba, remember who you are. What is the promise that you made to yourself? As a child, like I was saying, your inner child and her teen, what is it they wanna accomplish in this life? What did you wanna do when you were a child? And dreams change, you know, things can change, that's okay. But is there a part of who you are, like I was saying in that quote, are you, are you liberating yourself from your own fear? Not to liberate others, I mean it does, but are you liberating yourself from your own fear? Are you surrounding yourself with people who have a level of commitment to themselves as well? Are working to liberate themselves from their own fear? 
no one is perfect and, and that doesn't exist here, but commitment absolutely I feel like what I'm getting is like a mission statement. What is your mission statement? What is it you're wanting to commit to yourself with or in at this time? Towards your own growth. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. We'll pull an animal spirit card and then into the piles we go. Into the piles we go. <laughs> with the crow. Okay. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. So crow here, this is, um, it's very much like magical sight. The crow is similar to Hermes, Mercury, um, in the Greek and Roman pantheons. The uh, intermediary between the spirit realm and the human realm, the physical realm and, and ether. So I feel like right now there is this bridge has always been there, but um, maybe you're becoming more aware of this right now. You're seeing, you are starting to see things a little bit more greatly or a little bit more intricately. The recommendation with this is to make sure that you're ready. Make sure that you're open to this too. Because what the crow sees, what the shaman sees, is not always, most of the time is not, uh, something that is easily acceptable to the majority of the population. So getting ready to digest is what I'm hearing. Okay, I love it. Yay! Okay. 1717, 17, right on the timer there. Right on the timer. So let me um, clear here and then we'll talk about piles. Okay, I'm hearing ch 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 chia. <laughs> maybe you had a chia pet when you were a kid, or maybe you do now. Um, yeah, back to growth on that too. They definitely require um, the right kind of care, though, to grow to grow a chia pet. The kit comes with everything you need. Like I said, you've got the instructions on all of that, but um, the nutrients that you ascertain throughout your life are important too. I know there's that quote that's like, if you know, to bloom where you're planted. Mm, yeah, you know, I think it's important to, to be realistic with ourselves and make the most of a situation, which is what that quote is saying, to make the most of what you have. Absolutely. I will say though too, if you, as a seed, were um, because of the wind and gravity or whatever else were accidentally blown into an incinerator, right? Would you stay there to make the most of that and grow? I would hope not. We do also have the choice to move ourselves to more fertile soil, okay? I think there's a fine balance there of knowing, knowing when to hold them, knowing when to fold them, okay? Okay. So, um, actually, I'm going to go over the stone first, and then we'll move into the, the deck. I was holding the deck first. Uh, so, pile one, you guys. Uh, and I was going to hold up. I'm going to hold up a sheet of paper here in hopes you guys can see the stone a little bit better. First, uh, first stone here is citrine. So, hopefully, I don't know if that helps at all to be able to see. Oh, yes. Citrine. <laughs> and... Um, Phantasma deck is for pile one. So I pulled the strength and sun card from all these decks to show you in in um, honor of Leo. Okay, new moon in Leo. So this is the sun and strength here in the Phantasma deck. So you can get an idea of the imagery. Pile two, and feel free to pause these if you want to meditate a little bit longer on the stones themselves. Pile two here, this is Papagoy. Oh, yes. Some of my favorite stones for sure. And this is the Wild Unknown Tarot. So here's the Strength and Sun for Pile 2. And Pile 3. You guys, if you want to go with Pile 3, and you can choose more than one pile. This is Apophyllite. 
And I will go over the descriptions of these stones in the piles, okay? As, as I go to the piles. So based on that, I'd like, well, let me show you the deck, sorry. Zodiac. Zodiac Tarot is pile three. So here's the sun and strength. Okay. So feel free to choose your pile. I will have uh, timestamps on everything. Actually, speaking of, let me make a timestamp here. So we'll move into pile one here to start. Mm, loverly. 2112, right on the timer there. Great start, pile one. Okay, pile one. So if you chose pile one here, Citrine. And I do have some information on Citrine here. Got to grab this. Manifestation. Okay, I'm going to try to just hold this up here. Manifestation. This is personal will, mental clarity, and creativity. So, um, love this along the lines of the new moon in Leo here. That's exactly manifestation, your personal will. Working creatively, okay? Just tapping into your creativity. So, um, citrine works with the root, the sacral or creative, and solar plexus chakras. It does also stimulate the third eye to help with improving mental clarity but more so it stimulates those lower chakras so that the upper chakras can connect in the way that's best, okay? Um, is there anything else on that? Awaken powers of creative imagination and even the most unconscious individuals, yes. Yes, yes. Okay, let's get into your reading, you guys. Let's do it. Let me put these away. Thank you for your patience. This is the first time I've done something like this. I'm, I'm all excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, um, before we start, actually, I was told to pull a Mudra card. So I've had this deck for a minute, but I haven't put it on the channel yet. So each deck is going to get a Mudra. So a Mudra is um, a hand gesture, symbol, sign. Um, there are more in, in um, ancient Indian culture, Hinduism, but there are mudras that are global as well. So this deck has kind of all of them, or a lot of them. So for pile one here, please spirit, what is the mudra that is needed for their highest good? What would be helpful for them? And if you guys are resonating with this reading, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Um, I truly appreciate the support. I do have personal readings open if you're interested in that as well. Check out the description of the video. Um, I won't have, uh, well, will I do extendeds on this? I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure if we're going to do extendeds or not, okay? If I am, <laughs> there will be information in the description of the video as well to check out, okay? <laughs> I love this, you guys. Perfect. Right on. Um, an objective in mind. I can. I will. This is the mudra of will, <laughs> which is exactly perfect. Perfect with, uh, you've got the red for the root chakra. Perfect with the citrine and what we're talking about. So I'm going to read what this says here on the back. This mudra activates the circulation, is beneficial for all your organs, and strengthens you at all levels. The purpose of life consists in setting targets which are appropriate for you and which contribute to your satisfaction and joy. Allow yourself to take life's challenges one small step at a time. Never mind whether you are trying to learn something, change, build, or cure something, or perhaps just pursuing some sport or other. Give yourself a main target, preferably in writing, then divide it up into sub-targets which you can tackle stage by stage and begin immediately. The small successes strengthen your will, and soon your enthusiasm will begin to carry you along with it. Each small step brings satisfaction and brings me closer to my goal. So this is, um, if you couldn't see that very well, it's the middle finger. So like you would put a clasp here, but the middle finger is touching in the center. And then thumb out like this here too. So you can meditate with this mudra. And what that, um, what that does, because every finger here, I actually have them tattooed on my hand. Every finger has an element. 
earth, wind, water, fire, and spirit. The specific mudras um, direct energy in a specific way. Okay. I won't over explain that, but love that. That was a uh, perfect, perfect, perfect spirit. Okay. So let's get into your tarot messages. Are we doing any, you do want a spirit animal. Okay. But that's the only Oracle. Okay. Thanks. So for pile one here, spirit animal here for pile one. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I truly, truly missed you guys. And um, feel free in the comment section to let me know what it is you guys are going through. Um, I do enjoy engaging with you guys, especially as I can, getting to know you guys a little bit better, okay? If you want, I do like to talk. Beaver is what came out here. I'm gonna, I'm feeling drawn to read it in the book, apparently. I didn't even mean to grab the book here. Hard worker, loyal, tireless, and family first. So the beaver personality is a welcome sight. These good-natured and dependable creatures have infinite love and enthusiasm for family and express it by way of the earth element providing a home, financial stability. Although a beaver doesn't usually initiate a project, when started, they'll work steadily for weeks, months, or years to see it through. The beaver card appears when the task at hand requires your long-term steady effort. Mm, getting a ringing. I, I feel like, um, we'll talk about that here in a second. The beaver card appears when the task at hand requires long-term steady, yeah. Um, it can also signify that it's time for some karma yoga, selfless service. So, uh, in balance, happy and meaningful work, when out of balance, feels useless and worn out to bring into balance physical labor and selfless service. So, with that ringing, the message that was coming through for me here um, is receptivity of mind. I am drawn back to that symbol and meditation in the beginning of this message in the general. There may be some rigidity. I feel like there's some rigidity, pile one, to... Um, Something about a process of thought that you guys are having right now. Your will. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Something. Okay. Interesting. We'll start shuffling this as we're going through that. Um, so something about like you're, you're allowing all the wrong thing. And it doesn't have to be all. This could be hyperbolic. Allowing all the wrong things and you're pushing through in all the wrong ways. That feels extreme. I don't like I don't like all or nevers because that's that doesn't exist. That's not real. Um, what I'm getting from that is like you may be you may be allowing certain things like boundaries being crossed, or maybe you're not drawing boundaries. Maybe you're um, maybe you're someone who has a lot of water in your chart. You tend to be an emotional and giving sign. And there needs to be a boundary in how often you give or the way that you give, lest, lest you uh, slip into martyrdom, right? Or, or burning yourself out. But um, there is something about like with the will, I can and I will, less about just pushing through something and more about like that, that soft strength, strength, real strength, right? Um, again, I'm brought back to the, the strength card in the tarot, overcoming that difficulty or whatever that is with a soft and gentle hand, reprogramming some shit from childhood. Okay. Mm, maybe, yeah, being directed towards your family here too. Some of you may need to adjust the way the dam's been built. Mm. Or maybe the, <laughs> maybe you dammed up the wrong river. Interesting. Yeah, where there is no flow, there needs to be flow. And where there is flow, there needs to be less flow. And not in every way. I'm just, that's the message coming through. Okay, thank you, Spirit. Thank you, thank you. So, um, for pile one. What do we have here going on for pile one for this new moon in Leo? My beautiful collective friends. <laughs> what do we have, Spirit? But what do we have for them, Spirit? Ooh, the fool here at the split. So, um, a new journey, but something requiring faith. Again, I'm brought back to that. The fool is a very childlike energy. They are naive because they haven't started this journey yet. They don't know what life provides. But sometimes that uh, ignorance is bliss, right? Naivety can be helpful if there is a jaded energy to manifesting something that can get in the way. Nine of Pentacles just flew out there. 
your personal satisfaction, a glow up here. Um, this radiating around her crown area, and there's a bunch of crows around her too. Interesting. I'm getting, um, there's a need to get ready, like the crow in the general, there's a need to get ready for opening up to some spiritual sight, allowing it to expand your mind. Ooh, I love that. Okay. Okay. Cool, cool. Ooh, strength there at the split again. Yes, back to Leo, that calm hand, like I said. There's something, there's a fire in the brain. <laughs> Got a spicy brain right now. And it needs, um, <laughs> you have a fever. Some of you know this reference. You've got a fever and the only cure is more cowbell. <laughs> the only cure is compassion, okay, is a gentle hand. This isn't a pick yourself up by the bootstraps kind of situation. Um makes me want to vomit in my mouth a little bit. There are times where we need to push ourselves through things, but that's not the point of life, okay? And if you are going through a hard time right now, I'm sorry. And I know that things ebb and flow and they can absolutely get better. Hang in there. This one? This one, okay. Kidoki. So five of wands here at the bottom. Um, this is, um, competition. Okay. Like fighting for the sake of fighting. I feel like there is something going on as far as lack right now. There's some lack mentality. And this is, I think this is where the flow is happening. Like there's more flow that's happening towards the fear right now, rather than flow that's happening in imagination land towards the hope. Are you chasing a dream or are you running from a nightmare? This is telling me that pile one, you're running from a nightmare. You may be slipping into um, like shadow aspects of Leo too. Shadow aspects of any of the signs can be ego, but um, particularly with Leo, the shadow side is definitely falling into ego. Um, letting ego get the better of you here. I Like a, a pissing match, okay? A dick measuring contest, if you will. If you will, that's up to you. Um, the encouragement here is to think twice. Think twice by Celine Dion, okay? Is this really is this really what you want to do, okay? Do you have enough energy to exert towards this? Do you already have the life that you want? If your life is already perfect and you have everything you want, I'm truly delighted for you. And I want for that to be the answer. And I also feel, if you're here, that's not the case. So I would recommend, Spirit recommends, don't waste energy on pissing matches. You need that energy. The magician manifesting requires a great deal of energy. So don't, don't go spending your money on a bunch of uh, useless, you know, things that aren't helping you move forward in your life or move forward to where you want to go. Save that up and spend it on larger purchases that help improve your life. Yeah. Whether that's literally, okay, with finances or metaphorically speaking. Okay. Let's get into this here. So Ace of Wands, there's that energy. Five of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles, and the High Priestess. Okay. So to start off here, generally, and this totally makes sense, right off the coattails of the Five of Wands, Ace of Wands here, this is that creative, explosive energy. This is the energy that's required for the magician to manifest. So having this be in the general to start, excuse me, what this tells me is this is your time to shine. This is your time to create the framework, to move yourself to the places that you need to be moved, to allow yourself to be moved as well, being flexible, okay, loosening that rigidity, so that this energy can come into your life. Whether that is from an outside source, okay, the divine, whether that's, you know, the sun, maybe, maybe you need a little bit more sun, or if that's coming from an internal realm. I feel like this is a little bit more internal with the high priestess here later on here in the spread. So this is also drawing me back to, like in the general there, I was talking about what is it that your inner child or inner teen wanted to 
do? What do they want to accomplish in this life? What do they want to achieve? This is that energy of that a child has, right? To get started on a new journey. Could be kind of like matchstick energy too, to ignite the powder keg. What I'm getting from this is your pilot. So your pilot light is still on, but that's about it. And there's a whole damn boiler that needs to be heated at this time. So how, how are we getting from this place of pilot light to hot water again? Mm. Well, let's find out. <laughs> Can we get anything else here on the Ace of Wands, please, Spirit? The gin, yeah, 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 yeah. So the gin here, this is the devil, the devil. This is our shadow. So um, this is telling me absolutely what I was just saying there with ego and the five of wands there. This would be where ego resides. Anything that keeps us chained to this material realm prevents us from moving forward to where we want to move. The devil, the devil, <laughs> the gin is not something or someone outside of ourselves. It is, it is an archetype within us that defines the shadow, okay? It's an abuse of power. It's um, toxic behavior. But there's also an ability to free ourselves from this position too, free ourselves from these binds, because we're the ones who put ourselves there in the first place. That's what it means to have free will, okay? Um, in recognizing this to start with, it brings you closer to being able to, oh, okay, I'll finish that thought. Thank you. Um, to being able to get out of this cage here. The door is open. But you're, um, you know, you've been so used to being in this cage. You just are staying there. I'm, that's, that's your choice, though. So we do have Mercury retrograde coming up. That's what I was going to say, because I mentioned in the general to um, Hermes, Mercury being like... Um, the crow, excuse me, being that intermediary between spirit and the human realm. So when Mercury goes retrograde, um, that is, and that's starting on, is that on the fourth? It's on the fourth. I feel like this pre-shadow, it's been so strong. It feels like a potent one to me. I'll be honest. I do have a lot of uh, Mercury in my own chart, uh, through Gemini and Virgo. So I expect, you know, my words get a little bit more fumbly, right? Um, my quickness of mental uh, gymnastics, it's not not quite, I need to limber up a little bit more. Um, when Mercury goes retrograde though, in the Greek panth pantheon, Hermes would go to the underworld, Hermes Mercury would go to the underworld and retrieve information for the humans, secrets, things that they needed to know. While Hermes was gone, though, it was chaotic. Everything went haywire. Communication, travel, electronics. I mean, they didn't really have electronics, but these are things that we notice happen in our life today. Um, there's a caution towards signing major contracts, making major decisions, making sure that you are over-communicating in this time. The point of it is to, uh, and when Hermes comes back, gives that information to the humans. The point of it is for us to reduce our connection to the exterior world so that we can connect more on the inside inside very hermit like energy to find that star energy to find that light because the answers and the guidance that we're looking for are always they're either all already here like the seed is talking about or we already have the ability to connect to the energies that we need to receive those answers okay it's more than okay to you know, watch tarot here to get guidance and, and that sort of thing. I do always encourage, though, if you haven't started, to start developing your own natural gifts and abilities. We all have the ability to communicate with spirit. Okay? It's like breathing. It's that necessary. We need that guidance. Okay? So freeing yourself from the shadow allows this intense, like this energy that's been tied up in worrying about that component of the shadow. It allows that to become free, allows you to become free. Okay. My pile one friends, <laughs> said Pisces friends, my pile one friends. So what you're being asked to release as far as uh, focus right now, this is something that is 
important um, somewhere down the line for you, but you're being asked to like shift your focus from this to um, the Knight of Pentacles here. And we'll talk about that here in a second. So Five of Pentacles, this is a mindset of lack. This is feeling like you've, you've been out in the cold. You've been kicked out of somewhere where there is warmth. And that warmth can be financial security, comfort, peace, freedom, joy, oxytocin, right? Relationships in general. It can be many, many different things. The um, solution, though, is the same. We have to realize that the key to this door that we either has been or is perceived to have been slammed in our face, we have the skeleton key. We have the key to open that door. Just because whoever slammed that door, whether, and it could have been us, could have been someone else, could have been chaos, the universe. Um, they said as the door was slamming, this is never, you can never open this again. <laughs> like that's not true. Okay. So I feel like that's a part of what is going on here in your shadow. This is the abuse of power. It's the abuse of your own power. Somebody may have abused power towards you, but you are carrying that program with you now. You are continuing to abuse your own power towards yourself if you're allowing yourself to stay in this Five of Pentacles energy. And that's not to say that, um, you know, we, we don't take time to give compassion to ourselves when things hurt, okay, to validate things that do suck to validate things that weren't okay. That's not what I'm talking about here. This is the process of getting stuck there, okay? Oh, interesting. What I'm okay, what I'm getting from this is like being being wrapped up in the mind, okay? Which makes sense here with the jinn too, the devil. The devil um, the chains, very Eight of Swords energy, the chains that you guys may be carrying with you right now are um, being fed, being regalvanized by your thoughts. This, There's too much, um, and that makes sense with Citrine coming through, if you chose this pile. There's too much uh, air energy here, okay? Too much going on in the head. Maybe you are an air sign. Mm, I can relate, okay? I can definitely relate. Um, Gemini sun, Virgo rising, Virgo moon. That's a lot, the whole hell of a lot of Mercury energy. I get it. And it's conflicting too. Um, the root sacral and solar plexus chakras with the citrine. If you don't have citrine, I recommend you go out and get it. Okay. It doesn't need to be a fancy expensive piece either. Getting a nice polished piece of, of citrine, um, to have with you at this time to meditate with as well while you're doing your your I can, I will meditation is going to help ground that energy that's stuck up here. Okay. Cause this is, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Sometimes the solution is not to think through it. Okay. Sometimes the solution, mm, that makes sense with the dams too. You're damming up the wrong energy. Um, some of that air energy, that mind energy needs to be dammed up, needs to be restricted and some of the root, more root chakra energies are needing to be opened up. Maybe you're somebody who, death here on the bottom is standing out to me. Scorpio energy, okay, this is death and rebirth. But maybe you're somebody who um, doesn't want to be here, right? Um, not comfortable in my body, not comfortable in my life. Uh, this is a story that I'm very familiar with, okay, from my past. And um, it's not really until recently that I've started moving more into this isn't, well, both heaven and hell exist on earth here, right? This doesn't have to be a prison and it was never meant to be. This can also be a paradise, our palace, but this requires the right kind of perception too. So in bringing, like in my own experience, I always wanted to do existential meditation. I always wanted to travel. I always wanted to go away. Um, I would even stay away from stones that were grounding because I'm like, well, I don't want to be tethered here. Yes, you do. Okay, I promise you do. <laughs> You're here. You need to you need to tap into the energy of the earth as well to remain healthy. You can't use these upper chakras in the way that they need to be used without blowing out your own system energetically 
without being tethered and having a healthy balance between all the chakras. That may not be for everybody, but that's just a, just a heads up, okay? I know that when things are painful, and I know how painful things can get, too. Um, we may not want to be here, but I promise you that that is not the solution, okay? There is a way through this, and there are blue skies. There are better days, I promise. So what you're being asked to focus on here, the shift from the five of pentacles is to move into the knight of pentacles. And you do have, um, with the pentacles there too, very earth energy, a lot of earth energy. So again, I'm being drawn back to grounding. So something that would be helpful for you. Knight of pentacles is about expansion. It's not glamorous work, but the knight of pentacles puts energy into a situation a little bit at a time. A little bit of energy every single day, like learning a new language or, or any new skill. Putting a little bit of effort into that new skill every day will yield the results that the Knight of Pentacles is looking for. There's an encouragement here to get back up and try again. Don't let that horse, you know, may have knocked you off, but get back up, okay? If you need to get a new horse, that's fine. But like get back up on the horse. Movement is key here. Okay, whether it's physically or, or energetically, but this is expansion. So you're being asked to focus on your expansion for sure. Totally makes sense. Anything else here for 10 of pentacles? Yeah, definitely. Definitely some earth energy here. Hangman at the bottom. Some of you may be in a position right now where um, grinding halt is what I hear. Things have come to a standstill. And the reason for that is so that you can see something for what it is. And I feel like what's being asked to be seen here is uh, the truth, okay? Why am I feeling this way? Why am I in this position? And we can blame, you know, or, or even just point to, there are many things going on in the world constantly, but especially these days, that are very, very upsetting, no matter what you believe, okay? Um, the energy is very divisive and it's very polar, and that's a very uncomfortable space because Peace resides in the center, right? Peace resides in connection, community, cohesion, all the C's, right? Um, so you're being asked to see right now which path is best for you, for your highest good, to, fi to find your peace, okay? And until you see that, the way that you're participating in your own peace the way that others may be participating in your piece, or you may be allowing other people to participate in your piece. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickup peppers. <laughs> I felt like I said a lot of peas there. Um, that's what you're being asked to see right now so that you can accurately come up with a plan to expand, like the Knight of Pentacles is talking about. Ten of Pentacles is what came out to clarify the Knight of Pentacles. More Earth. But this is your ultimate material and spiritual abundance. All you ever wanted. Everything, okay? This is um, this is your dynamic vector. Okay. So, I'm getting chills on that. Ooh, say that again. So, you, how do you want me to say that? Like your dream, your ultimate goal, your legacy here. What I'm getting is this energy of like, I, I was on the path to do this. I thought I was on the path to do this. And then maybe a tower moment came through and something something has happened. What I'm being told is that um, it was never a straight line, okay? We have a tendency to look at this experience as a straight line. I'm going to go from here to here. And um, what, I, what they're showing me is like, I guess you could see it as a B line, but it's a curved line that to a human, you know, through different dimensions here, to a human would be perceived as like a straight line. We're going from here to there. But it's so much more intricate than that. And so what's coming through on that is, again, some flexibility of, of mind and will to allow yourself to take the turns that are needed, okay? Like if you were on a water slide and it starts to turn, your body turns with it, right? You're not going <laughs> to... You're not plowing through the um, <laughs> the fiberglass or the plastic to get to the pool at the bottom quicker. You're taking the path that you were intended to take. And sometimes if we're turning left and we can't see the end goal right then and there, 
we can get to a point where we lose faith that we're even moving towards that goal in the first place. So that is another component I feel like you guys are being asked to see is um, your flexibility, okay? Your flexibility in how <clears throat> you allow yourself to be moved, especially when it's a blind corner or requires faith. Okay, my goodness. So high priestess here, this is where it leads or what it's good for. I love this, you guys. Um, secret knowledge, okay? And I don't, this could be, you know, maybe you're studying something esoteric or... Um, occult like you know maybe maybe it is something truly secret for most people but i feel like we're in a time right now we are in a time right now where things that used to be secret are becoming non-secrets right uh, at least there is an availability to procure this information a bit more in allowing yourself to step away from the shadow letting yourself out of that cage picking up that massive amount of energy, stepping away from where you feel lack, moving into um, a game plan, sticking with your game plan, knowing what your destination is and making a plan to get there, allowing yourself flexibility, brings you to this place of greater knowledge. Ascension, initiation. I know that's an energy that's been coming through a lot in my readings, in other... Um, in other readers' readings that I've seen too, okay? Um, now's the time. And that's what the High Priestess is doing here. She is an, an initiatrix, okay? She's here to either allow you or not allow you safe passage to the river of knowledge behind her. I feel like in getting these ducks squared away here, you guys are being offered this chance to uh, go forth and multiply, okay? Yeah, to go forth and multiply. You could literally be looking to have a child, but I feel like this is more manifestation. The conscious mind, the male, the masculine, impregnating the unconscious mind, the female, the feminine, okay? That's what... Um, as controversial as that might be for some people, that is my understanding anyway, what the Bible means when it says the wife submits to the husband. It's actually just like many holy books are describing our energetic experience here and how to be a human, okay? So the husband, the conscious mind, and the wife, the unconscious mind. The wife, unconscious mind, submits to the conscious mind not out of control or fear or need, you know, it is because it requires the input of the conscious mind to program the subconscious. And then the subconscious runs that program to allow a reality for the conscious mind to experience and to continue to manifest from there. Okay. So that's just the way that that works. Ace of Cups is what came out here to clarify the high priestess. So there could be, um, go forth and multiply, there could be a new relationship coming through for some of you. Maybe there is a kid, you know, maybe there's a, a wee little Bobby that you guys are, are working to bring into this realm. Um, but the Ace of Cups is an opportunity for a new emotional, energetic experience. I very much feel like this is you guys in particular first. Saying that with the relationship between the conscious and the unconscious mind um, that is a new relationship. Like if you are uh, realizing, starting to realize that this is how it works, it's really quite simple. We like to make it more complicated. The ego likes to make it real complicated. Um, getting to a place where you're seeing that more for what it is, this allows you to build, have a whole new relationship with yourself and the world because of that and everybody and everything in it. About here hugging peacocks and shit, <laughs> right? Okay. Pile one, I think. Are we, yeah, close that out here? Yes. Oh, that was fun. Yay. Okay. Oh, and <laughs> it ended at strength again here on the bottom. I got all the chills on that. Um, yeah, you guys, okay. Calm, steady hand, all right? If you need to um, bring compassion into your experience right now, I've said this a lot too. Pushing ourselves through something is so 2000 late, okay? 1800s is where we're going to leave that. 
There is a need to challenge yourself on things, but pushing yourself because somebody said you needed to, you're weak if you don't, you know, that's not what men do or that's not what women do or, or whatever, okay? That is such an old, archaic, uh, barbaric <laughs> program, okay? So we're done doing that. And it doesn't yield the results that we're looking for anyway. Giving yourself compassion, validating your experience, and allowing yourself to pick yourself up after you've consoled yourself, that is true strength. And that actually yields results. That actually allows us to push ourselves further than we would be able to if we were ignoring, okay? So I love you, pile one. Thank you guys so much for joining me here. So I'm gonna go ahead and move into pile two. Thank you guys, that was fun. Thanks for being with me here today. Thank you for coming. All right, let me get a time here. Okie doke. Mm. I'm seeing um, pile two, welcome. I'm seeing a phoenix, actually. Perched phoenix, okay, interesting. All right, let's get into this. Let's get into this, you guys. So um, I'm gonna start off here with a mudra card. I did for pile one, I'm gonna do these for all the piles. So mudras are hand gestures, symbols that direct the various elements that all of our fingers have, fire, earth, wind, water, and spirit, ether, um, to produce desired effects, all right? So these are from all over the world. They're not just Hindu or Indian mudras. Pile two here though. Oh, I forgot to show. <laughs> pile two. If you were pile two, you chose the Papagoite. I forgot. The Papagoite. So um, I meant to explain this first and then we'll pull cards. I got excited, I got excited. So Papagoite, this is returning to a state of grace. Um, connection with the higher dimensions, especially the angelic realms. It also allows for better, easier connection to your guides. So if you're looking to connect a little bit better right now, if, if you're in a place where um, Maybe you're seeing other people on YouTube here or other people you know that are able to connect a little bit better with their guides or they're in a place where you want to be. Start utilizing some of these kinds of stones to allow for an easier connection, okay? So meditating with Papa Gawite is an excellent way to connect with those higher realms. Transmutation of sorrow. It is the crystallization of consciousness beyond the body. So um, this stone actually, it was given to me um, by my sister when I was going through a lot of grief and sorrow. So the transmutation of sorrow was the main component to this. Um, if you really want to up that, Ahawite as well, combining that, this transmutation of negativity, really starting to create a more healthy environment for your energy. Putting this up to your third eye as well really helps facilitate that connection and bring um, bring the 8th through the 14th chakras, your etheric and astral chakras, engaged with the crown and the third eye. Okay, so third eye and above is what this stone works with, allows for that easier connection. Um, yeah, okay, and let's move on. And Wild Unknown Tarot is what you guys got. So now we'll move into the mudra. Uh, I have a feeling just because of the transmutation of sorrow and that sort of thing. I'm, I'm kind of getting this feeling of, um, is it an ancestor? Okay, I think for some of you it's an ancestor, some, a guide or a, a teacher. They, they could also cross over here. Okay, it's a Venn diagram. <laughs> um, there's a message that's been trying to get through to you. Like you've been asking for this message even. And the message has been coming through, but there's a disconnect in you receiving this message, okay? You changed your address, <laughs> um, but you never confirmed it, so the mail has just been, like, lost somewhere. 
all you need to do is, is uh, call the post office and confirm your address <laughs> in this example here, which is like, uh, what, I, what I'm getting from that is, um, do you want me to explain that? So prayer is about putting our energy out, is about requesting, is about asking. Meditation is about receiving, listening, okay, L receiving that answer. So if you're in a place where uh, prayer and meditation need to be going hand in hand, okay, don't really want to be doing one without the other. Um, if you're one who prays, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a, you know, However you want to pray, putting out intention is a prayer, a request. If you're not taking time to quiet your mind, your body, your heart, to listen, then how do you know that that message is not coming through? You know what I mean? Those messages are, are very quiet voices or feelings, and it's difficult to feel that or impossible in certain more elevated brain wave states. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right, Spirit, what do we have here for pile two, my pile two friends, as far as mudra, mudras go? Um, and like I told pile one, I'm not sure if I'm going to do extended. I think I'm not going to do extendeds on these. Um, <laughs> this is funny. I mean, it's not, it's apropos, okay? Um, yes, okay, we'll get into this. So this is courage. Show yourself what's in you. Um... I feel like, as I was talking about this meditation, going inside, what's what's in you here? The Durga Mudra. This is, um, and I'll show you here. This is um, an anti-panic mudra, and it's dedicated to the invincible goddess Durga. She rides a snarling lion, new, new moon in Leo, I love it. And in each of her many hands, she holds a weapon. These she uses to terrible effect, killing her enemies or putting or putting them to flight. In a case of panic attack, it is important to restrain your inhalation and intensify your exhalation. So in through the nose, out through the mouth, okay? It, it limits how much air can come in through your nose and out through your mouth. In through the nose is also air, out through the mouth is fire, okay? So you're bringing in a little bit more peace of mind or processing of trauma and, and out of a passion, okay? Intense fire energy. Um, keep your hands tightly pressed, stand with slightly bent knees, and concentrate on the soles of your feet. Visualize yourself as the weapon wielding screeching Durga. Your appearance alone will ensure the respect of the others. Does this conception simply make you chuckle? All the better. What tries to frighten me is nothing more than a ghost, which I chase away with a single glance. So, thumb under first finger here very like power stance, okay? Meditating in this way. Um, I feel like some of you may be avoiding meditation, that component of receiving because of anxiety or panic. I know when I first started meditating too, I'm constantly feeling many, many different sensations. And um, it's caused me a lot of panic and anxiety throughout my entire life because I didn't know what was going on. Um, I just never felt, you know, I was constantly spinning in multiple directions and that can be really, uh, distressing and as well as disorienting. Maybe you're someone who experiences something like that too. Maybe it makes you uncomfortable to feel dizzy. Okay. Um, if that's the case, I feel like the intention here with this is to help you with your anxiety or panic so that you can get into this place of receiving the message that needs to come through. Okay. Okay. All right, so Spirit, what do we have here for Pile 2? Um, Wild Unknown Tarot, like I said. What do we have for Pile 2, please, Spirit? Ooh, Father of Pentacles is slipping out here. Um, generosity is definitely something that's standing out there to me about that. Um, but I feel like a part of the message coming through is instruction or direction on moving you closer towards the abundance that you're requesting, okay? Whether that's um, financial, spiritual, emotional, whatever kind of abundance you want. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, power two, spirit. Power two. Power two. And I do have personal readings open and available if you're interested in that. There's a link in the description of my video. In my video. I even have the AC turned off for you guys as I'm filming here. I feel like I'm temperature slowly climbing. It's been very, very warm here. <laughs> Hot, even, actually. Uh, and good old Spokaloo. So six of pentacles here at the bottom. Um, <laughs> I feel like this is very right on, too. As I was just talking about prayer and meditation. So six of pentacles is this energy. It is the process of giving and taking or giving and receiving. So in times where we need something, being open to receiving that, and in times where we have more to give to, to those who need help, you know, um, we give giving that, giving what we can, okay? Not, not over giving or putting ourselves in a place where we're in trouble. But being at the bottom here, um, in my typical readings, I do two decks. So there's a fear and a hope pile. This is gonna be hopes and fears here. I feel like that's right on exactly what I was saying. There, uh, it may not be specifically like the dizziness, that it's dizziness that makes you feel afraid as you're meditating here, but there's like a fear towards receiving. And that we are all, we are all working to heal the divine feminine right now, okay? Has nothing to do with your bits and bobbles, right? Um, has nothing to do with procreation, divine energies. So the divine feminine within all of us is our ability to receive. It is our ability to recharge to stop motion so that we can heal or grow. We all in this life, we do live in a, a, a toxic, um, divine masculine dominated environment. It, that energy has been allowed to overtake the balance. And so we're all working right now to bring that into balance, which means that we all have issues that we are either working on or have worked on. We're at different levels, right? towards receiving, towards connecting with the divine feminine, connecting with uh, our divine mother, the earth, okay? Taking calm activities, meditating, meditating. Love it, okay, let's move on. So nine of wands, son of pentacles here, death, and um, seven of cups, kidoke. So generally speaking, to start nine of wands, so nine of wands here is resilience. It is seeing the value in protecting what it is that you're building or being reminded here that what you are building or working on does have value. Maybe you've gotten to a, a place here where, um, cause I am getting kind of, I don't pull these in reverse, but I do read these intuitively. I am getting kind of a, Oh, what is that word? Not puncture. Like being hoisted up on your own petard, right? You're skewering yourself. Or you're at this place where you could you could be moving into that. If you are not um, recharging properly, if you're not resting properly, tapping into that divine feminine, asking for help when needed, you may be getting to a point where this is the wounded warrior. They're tired. They're tired AF having a hard time finding the energy to continue on. And this is an encouragement to continue on, that success is just around the corner. But if we don't hold that in our mind, in our heart, this can very easily get into the shadow aspect of the card, which is going to be um, impaling. That's what I was looking for. Impaling ourselves. Instead of the work we're putting into what ourselves, our mission here, instead of that being helpful, protecting ourselves, maybe we're protecting ourselves from help. Okay. And in doing that, in resisting that receiving, we are actually impaling ourselves. We are making the process harder for ourselves. Okay. And that is, that's martyrdom. And that's a form of self betrayal. Okay. Anything else here on the nine of wands, please spirit for pow two. It feels like with um, with sorrow as well, the transmutation of sorrow that was definitely standing standing out. This may be um, this may be what is preventing you from being more open, like the Six of Pentacles is talking about, to 
that process of receiving. We can't truly give unless we're also open to receive. It's the same wheel. It's the same, it's the same direction and force. So you can't like push energy out here, but not allow that means nothing's moving or you're adding pressure somewhere and it's breaking the system. You have to be able to receive if you're also giving. And having that wheel not move at all is also stagnating that energy. Okay. Um, your sorrow, that's what I was saying. There's something I'm feeling about grief here that may be preventing you from being open in a healthy way. Maybe there is um, a trauma that's happened. And so now there's a story or program where you're saying, well, when I open up to people, this happens. Okay. Um, I'll share with you. I, that's one that's been really tricky to reprogram for myself my entire life in bringing up my needs. Okay. And talking about what I need, having that result in punishment was a story of mine that lasted for a long time. And that's because there were times where I had needs, um, that I was speaking up about. Okay. Whether it was from physical trauma um, psychological trauma, whatever, just as a kid bringing up that I have a need and having a punishment actually come instead really got me projecting this story that that is how life is. And so that's how life was. So if you're anywhere similar to that, maybe that is your story. Becoming aware of that and reprogramming that transmute that sorrow. Okay. Just because it did happen at one point does not mean that it will now always happen that way. The ego is trying to keep us safe in, in that way by saying, oh, this is what's happened in the past. We just because it's happened in the past does not mean it will happen in the future, but we do have an effect on that. Okay. So son of cups comes through here to clarify the nine of wands, knight of cups. This is, um, the sorrow could be involved in romance. Maybe there was a relationship where somebody broke your heart. I get this feeling of like, um, the Knight of Cups can be a player. Okay. Playboy, playgirl, play non-binary human, um, where they are just pursuing getting their cup filled here. So I do kind of get the energy and it doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic relationship, but where maybe you felt used, you felt like somebody got what they needed from you and then left you high and dry. And maybe they did. If that's the case, even just as an example, use that as a jumping off point to see it for what it is. Okay, this happened to me. That sucked. That wasn't okay. Whatever, whatever, it is, this is how I'm feeling about that. Okay, being honest about that and then moving into being aware that when triggering situations come up to bring that forward, you are not feeding into the same program. That every relationship I get into or everybody that I meet just wants something from me. People just come into my life to take something from me and then leave me. Okay. That's a lie. I mean, it's true because you're making it true. All right. If this is you specifically, this is anything that we say to ourselves. And I know it's not an easy thing to hear either, but if you're here, I want to help you. I'm here to help. Okay. I'm not here. I'm not putting my very valuable time and energy in this format to be um, a pain in anyone's ass, okay? I truly believe in what I'm doing here. And, and I know that it has a major impact on those that it's meant to reach. So if this is you and you're feeling resistance in this message, please take that as an indication that this message is exactly for you. Soften that heart, okay? And it's okay. Be pissed off at me. That's fine. If that's you, you can be angry with me now, but process the message later too. Okay. Cause I want, I want you to experience the good shit here too. Okay. So what you're being asked to um, shift your focus from at this point, there may be an, an, an amount of attention that's going on to this. It's not that it's not important, but right now it's not, there is a different focus. You have son of pentacles. So knight of pentacles, um, I do get, I do get this energy of, um, as an example, okay, we'll, we'll go to the relationships here. Maybe you do have a story similar to that. 
but you're also somebody who is um, we'll say like a serial dater. OK, maybe there is a string of very short lived relationships and um, you go from one to the next to the next to the next. And it doesn't have to just be that. It could be, um, you know, your habits. Like if you're if there's not ever a time of exhale is kind of what I'm getting. If you're constantly trying to inhale, which you can't do, <laughs> you're not releasing the, the toxic stuff from our system that needs to be released. And you're not honoring the natural flow of the universe either, which was the main message here in the beginning, in the general portion here, honoring that flow and stepping into that flow. I'm not saying more specifically that you need to be or not be single. What I'm saying is if you're finding that you're running into the same issue, whether it's with relationships, work, yourself, whatever, um, to find a way to pay attention to that pause in between, okay? Instead of just jumping from one thing to the next and carrying a story, uh, this is just how everybody treats me. This is how it always ends up, especially if that's how you're speaking to yourself, okay? And it's difficult to start changing that story until we become aware that we're even speaking it, taking ownership of our own participation in our own life, okay? Time to, to clear the bats out of the belfry there. So getting back up and trying again and focusing on your expansion right now is what is being asked to be shifted to the back burner. It will be important later, but right now there's a focus on death. This is what you're being asked to focus on. And I feel like the reason for that is something, there is an honoring of a cycle. That's what death is. It is the end of something. It is the start of something new. I think that's why I was seeing the um, phoenix there, okay? I don't think that's a phoenix necessarily, but um, phoenix is all about death and rebirth. I, I very much attach that to the death card. Um, there's something about the component of death. Like something needs to be ended before something else can begin. If you're carrying death, this process of death, whether that is a, a portion of self, your life, emotions, um, trauma, your job, relationships, something that naturally, because death represents a natural cycle, something coming to an end. It's not a tower, but um, something needed to naturally come to an end. And what I'm getting is that there's resistance. There's resistance to just letting that end so that you can start again. So you're caught in this place of constant death and if you're finding yourself also speaking that into your world that's keeping that's keeping yourself in that cycle it's making it difficult to move through that i'm brought back again to this um the symbol here in meditation in the beginning more patience this is to help soften your own process here because i feel like it's an impatience towards yourself too like that lack of an exhale, it's like a constant anxiety, very um, shallow breathing. That's what I'm getting. Um, there's a need for you to bring some patience into your situation towards yourself. Especially if this is your story that like other people are, are doing this to me. There are forms of chaos and we are also constantly being reflected in our environment around us. So what, what are you, how are you treating yourself or how are you allowing yourself to be treated? There's a need to take a beat here. Okay. Is what I'm getting. There's a need to take a beat and, um, examine what cycle here needs to come to a close. Can we get a little more information on that? Please spirit with Beth. <laughs> Six of pentacles came out here, which is what was at the bottom here, right back to what I was saying there. Um, Oh, there are two, two others that came out here too. Eight of Pentacles, which I love this. This is work, passion you put into your work. You could be feeling burnt out. So this could have to do with work for some of you. It's more the imagery of the spider that's standing out to me. The spider is, well, like the crow also, it is a, an, a messenger between the spirit and human realm in Native American culture. But it's also can be symbolic of, um, oh, the web we weave. A reminder to look at how we are making choices 
to participate in our own life. So with that six of pentacles and that, now nine of pentacles here too. This is your independence, your personal abundance. So what I'm feeling here is a story. A story needs to end. There needs to be um, a cognizance towards the part that you're playing in that, though, with the spider here, like I said. And back to receiving these messages from spirit, too. Okay. Okay. Let's move forward here. Finish this off. So Seven of Cups. What this is good for, where it leads. You have... Um, I didn't pull an animal card for you guys, either. We'll pull one at the end. Okay. Um, Seven of Cups. So this is being spoiled for choice. It can be... Um, for some of you, it could be... If you can get this together in the right way, this is a very rare form of spiritual ascension and enlightenment. Um, but for most of what's going on here in this message, I get um, a need to pull oneself out of, of Delulu Nation, okay? Out of imagination land or delusion land. The shadow side of imagination land. Okay, because imagination actually has been a, a message that's come through here since the general. As we're creating here with the new moon in Leo, um, we do want to use our imagination. But what portion of your imagination are you using? Are you using the part that is manifesting for your highest good? Or are you using the part that is tainted with shadow? <laughs> the pride lands that that have the, what was it, the elephant graveyard in uh in the lion king everywhere the light touches except for there is your kingdom right not that you need to be afraid of that but we're not spending time here is what i'm getting there's a need to pull yourself into a more concrete controlled form of reality creating and choices do open up for you at that point okay anything else here for pal two spirit before we close this off Pile two, pile two. Spider-Man. Daughter of Pentacles. Justice here, too, at the at the bottom. Um, these cats here are waiting, the light and the dark, are waiting for you to make a choice. It's not about a right or wrong choice. You get to decide what that means. But they're waiting. The balance of everything, fairness, as you know it, is waiting for your choice. Okay. So Daughter of Pentacles, this is Page of Pentacles. This is um, this is my Put Me In Coach card. Um, excuse me, not my Put Me In Coach card. This is, uh, this is uh, a student, studious energy, scholarly energy as well. Um, I've noticed here, just quick sidebar, with the lighting that I have, I'm going to order some different bulbs. I'm very, very sensitive to lights, and I'm finding that these LED lights, they create like an imperceptible flicker, I guess. And there's also blue light. Um, I've moved them away a little bit further, but I start getting real dizzy and a weird, wonky, okay? If I have been in front of them for too long. It's been almost an hour and a half, so um, please forgive the brain fog. Page of Pentacles here, though. This is being clever. This is taking something that exists and improving on it or making it better. Making the reality you want from the reality that you already have. Learning how to do that, okay? And I feel like that's pointing to learning how to shift the energies that are already going on inside of you for manifestation, right? Pulling yourself out of Delulu Nation. Okay, so animal spirit card here for pile two, please, spirit. Spirit, spirit. Can't believe I forgot that. I can't believe it. Oh, dear. <laughs> you got the deer. And there's also actually peacock here at the bottom. Um, this was in, this card didn't come through, but the peacock was in the Phantasma deck in pile one. So if you resonate, maybe seeing pile one would be helpful for you as well. So the deer energy here, what this is saying to me is that you are in a time with that death, death and rebirth, that process, that's like, that's the birth canal. Okay. Moving into rebirth here. The deer energy is the divine feminine. It is giving birth to new life respecting that process and that flow 
knowing that you're protected as you're bringing new life into this realm, okay, into your reality. You need to believe that, though. You need to believe that until it's knowledge. And if there's a, a difficult time with accepting that, um, I feel like that's a big part of the message that's trying to come through to you guys, okay? So back to meditation as well. This is very much meditation energy going into that receptive state. Okay. I love you, pile two. Thank you guys so much for joining me here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up. We'll move into pile three. Feel free to join me there if you want. If this is where I leave you, have a beautiful however long, okay? Until I see you guys again. I'm going to get started here on the signs this week too. And I will be doing more collectives, I promise. Don't worry. Um, and some all signs and lives. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. If you would like some information on upcoming news and stuff, I am planning on adding some other services here in the future. Feel free to join the newsletter. There's a link in the comment section here, also in the description of the video. All righty. And again, personal readings are open. I'd love to help you out if there's something that you need help with a little bit more specifically. Okay. Be well, you guys. We'll see you. We'll see you. See you soon. Okay. All right, pile three. Hello, you guys. We made it. Um, I'll write down a time here real quick. I think that was right. I'll have to go back and check it. Good to see you. If you guys, um, I mean, if you watched all of these, uh, welcome, welcome. Thanks for hanging in here with me. I'm sure I'm getting shinier as the filming goes on. I did shut off my AC to do filming here, so it's just slowly getting warmer and warmer. Um, Pile three, you made it. So pop light. This is this is you, y'all. And then the zodiac tarot. So I'm gonna read about um, apophyllite here real quick. So apophyllite is about interdimensional awareness. It allows for connection to the higher dimensional realms, including the angelic realms. So if you're looking to do work or communicate with those higher dimensional beings. This is a beautiful, beautiful stone to work with. It's a very, um, it gives me a nice little like buzz, like boo, <laughs> um, connecting with those higher realms and, and the higher chakras of our being, okay? The, um, the eighth through the 14th chakras there, our etheric chakras and that sort of thing, etc. But crown and third eye specifically is what this this stone really activates. So attuning to higher frequency of energies in the angelic and interdimensional realms, connecting with your guides specifically as well. So if you're someone who's been looking to connect with your guides, you're feeling like you want to know who they are, um, who, what, where, when, why, how, great stone to start doing that with. Papa Go White was also a really good one in pile two to help with that as well. Okay, so we'll start with a mudra card as we've done for the other piles. What do we have for pile three here, spirit? So mudras are hand gestures, symbols. Um, this is probably one of the more common ones we've all seen. Uh, depending on which way you're holding this, like this is a, a form of balance in meditation. This can also be protecting one's energy. Uh, but there are many different ones throughout many different cultures. And this deck has lots of them. So. What does pile three need at this time? This is to help you in meditation, help direct energies a little bit better or with more intention. So magic, ooh, be bewitched. So I'm gonna read, show this to you guys here and I'll read the back of the card. This is Vismaya Mudra. It's the gesture for a clear and deep perception. Perfect for Apophyllite, really clearing that up. Life, the universe, and we ourselves are part of a great mystery. Although science purports to know a great deal, in fact, we know almost nothing. If truth be told, we consist of something like empty space full of vibrating energy. This unfathomable paradox gives us a clue to the intelligence, the plan which lies behind everything in the universe. A mystery which cannot come to an end with our physical death. 
comforting, fascinating, and what makes sense of our lives. Put yourself in some holy place, a great cathedral or temple. Let yourself be infused with a magical atmosphere so that you receive an inkling of the great mystery which determines the hidden, hidden meaning in our lives. My life is encompassed within the great secret of the universe. I have faith in its benevolence. Oh, I love that. So this is the uh, middle finger here. So is it middle? Yeah. Middle finger comes together. The pointer fingers come about mid thumb. So you're just going to hold like this here. Okay. You got it. If you want it. You got it, you want it. You want it, you got it. Okay, moving forward here. Do an animal energy, and then we'll get into your tarot messages. What do we have for pile three, please, spirit? This has been fun, you guys. Thank you for joining me here. Especially, you know, watched a couple of them, or um, I've had a lot of fun doing this. It's been a minute since I've done a pick a pile, so. Stingray, wow, wow, wow. So Stingray here, this is about um, growing a spine. Or tapping into your spine, tapping into your stability. There could be something that a situation or person, there's a need to stand in your own power or truth. With the new moon in Leo here, the general message is being, you know, learning to authentically love ourselves, getting back to standing in our own power. So I love to see this come through. So double encouragement here, tapping into that magic, our own personal power, or drawing that. I mean, if you want to go into a holy place, a temple, a holy place could be your meditation room. You know what I mean? Nature. Um, just getting into a state where you are pulling that magic into your own energetic field to help revitalize you too, to galvanize yourself for this difficult journey. Okay. Pile three. Here we go. Here we go. So what do we have here, please, Spirit, for Pile 3? And if you guys are interested in personal readings, I do have those open and available. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to check out my website. Feel free to join the newsletter if you'd like news um, about upcoming stuff. I do have some new services that I will be rolling out here in the future. So if you're a part of the newsletter, you'll be first to get information on that kind of stuff okay okay what do we have for pile three please spirit oh okay one second did i i did do this i just feel like i was telling pile two here at the end i'm finding that um so I've got these soft boxes with uh, LED bulbs in them. I'm finding just how sensitive I am to light. Um, the reason I stopped doing like all signs live readings is because at a certain point I start getting really not feeling good, feeling sick, dizzy. Um, guaranteed it's these lights. Okay. So I'm at a point here at pile three where my brain is a little, little fuzzy, but um, we're still, we're still channeling here. Okay. We get some new bulbs. It'll be fine. We'll fix it. Can we fix it? Yes, we can. Bob the Builder. <laughs> this one. So King of Swords here at the bottom being um, your hope, hope and fear. I feel like um, connecting here to the Stingray, the King of Swords is all kings are leaders. The King of Swords is definitely going to be more of the mind, very logical, very discerning. I get this feeling of um, like picking your battles, okay? Knowing, knowing very lion energy too. Knowing when to utilize your energy and knowing when to hold that in reserves. And this comes from feeling more solid or steady, that spine energy in, in yourself, okay? Okay, let's get into it and see what's up. The moon, mm -hmm. the moon, page of wands, eight of pe or six of pentacles, eight of pentacles. These are a little smaller now with my glasses on. And seven of pentacles, okay. Okay. So the moon here, to start, the general. I do feel like, um, especially again with that stingray, finding, finding the stability, there is something about fear that's coming forward here. And with magic too, I feel like the intention of this time is 
is to really remind you of your own personal power and magic, like I was saying. But there seems to be something, especially right now, that is triggering a fear. And this fear is difficult to step away from. Like it's, it's blinding. Where that light or the energy coming from that could be used to illuminate the path that you need to take here. It's actually, you know, like deer in headlights kind of thing is what I'm getting. There is a need to, and that was a part of the general message too, to respect the flow of the universe. When we are descending into fear, when we allow ourselves to descend into fear, because there will always be a reason for fear, but there is a portion in most situations where we are giving our, our consent to be afraid. There can be fear. That doesn't mean that we have to be afraid. And at the same time, it doesn't mean that we're failing if we are afraid. Okay. This is where courage comes in. New Moon and Leo here. We're taking courage. We're starting to put out there maybe where we want more courage or where we need more courage. Okay. Anything else here on the moon, please, spirit? Ooh. Just that one. Okay. Tower. So, okay. <laughs> Um, I don't normally say that, like I said at the end there with, um, if there is fear, doesn't mean that we're failing. Okay. Normally I just say there's fear, but we, we can make the decision to be afraid or not. So with a tower situation happening here, there are, um, there's a lot of towers happening for us globally, individually. You can take this on a global scale. Um, I do, I do see it as, a, a collective theme but we are experiencing this individually as well. So you have gone through, maybe you're seeing this on the horizon. It could have happened in the past. This feels a little bit more recent though. Something really coming to a close in um, a harsh way, maybe even violent. The tower is something that's been built essentially by our ego for comfort, for safety, whatever that is. Uh, maybe to keep ourselves away from whatever that fear is that's coming up. But this is interrupting the flow because we're we're trying to elevate ourselves from the situation rather than learning um, learning skills to flow, to navigate this. So the tower comes down. There's a, a flash of lightning. Yeah, a bolt of lightning hits the tower. Things are illuminated for us and then it comes to a close. I do feel like this is something that if it hasn't happened yet, you've been resisting or you, you were resisting. And this is really, this is where your opportunity to have courage comes into play, to make a different choice as far as the way that you are navigating fear or fear has a role in your life. Courage wouldn't exist if there wasn't, uh, like the word would not exist, if there wasn't an energy that could help us get through fear. So it does feel like there's like an over um, abundance of air energy specifically. That king of swords we had at the bottom, hopes and fears. I feel like there is a desire, there's this hope here to master whatever the situation is that's going on purely with the mind. And in doing that, it's actually exacerbating the fear because it's creating this very like eight of swords energy, this trap. We're trapping ourselves in our mind with too much air energy. Um, we can get stuck there. We need, to, we need to balance things out. We need to balance out the intellect with a, a grounded approach too. So um, I feel like this is like, as an example, maybe your, your position was made redundant, specific, but that's what's coming through. A job has been lost and this, you were not given a lot of notice, okay? Um, you're already living paycheck to paycheck, which is something that a lot of people in the, the world live as. Um, having a, a primary source of income taken away from us, that can absolutely trigger fears. Absolutely, absolutely. So what's coming to mind for me on that, though, is if you are pursuing the solution to that issue purely with the mind, i.e., 
um, how am I going to figure this out every second of every day? Like, how am I going to procure a job or money or whatever by, by spinning and spinning and spinning in that mind energy? That's, ac that's not actually helping you. There is literally only so much you can do on the physical plane. There are only so many jobs you can apply to. There's only so many hours in the day where you can put effort into that. And as long as you're doing that, great. You know, if this is your situation, what I'm getting more is a need to, um, faith. Okay. Actually seeing the light that's coming through to illuminate your way through creating and manifesting a situation here, using your power with this new moon in Leo to create what it is that you need. We can't create out of fear. I mean, we can, but it's not its not uh, creating what it is that we actually need or desire. When we make decisions out of fear, you go get that job out of fear. Um, and, you know, we, we do what we need to do. Like, I get that. But um, there's usually something that is also personifying the fear that we went into that situation with. Okay? Relationship, job, new place to live, whatever. So keep that in mind, okay? You're being requested right now to, to pay attention to what's been illuminated through that process of striking the tower and um, to do what you can, okay? To heal this process, but to know that this is not something that is just solved through mental fortitude alone. Bring some heart, bring some grounding into the situation. Even though it sounds hard, try to come into a present moment. That is where we're able to collapse time and manifest what we need. I promise you it's possible. Okay. So where you're being asked to uh, divert your attention, there may be a hyper fixation on this. It's not that it's not important, but right now it's not important. Um, so this will be important in the future. But first you need to deal with the eight of pentacles and we'll get there. So page of wands as an action to avoid here. Page of Wands, this is, um, this is my put me in coach card. It is this energy of excitement towards a new venture. It's being, um, yeah, being illuminated. To, oh, that's interesting. Being illuminated to a path. Okay, so what? Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay, these things are like on each other's heels, all right? As far as bringing this up, and this isn't important right now, the reason why this isn't important right now, it is important. You having that energy of excitement towards starting something new, that's the component I'm talking about to help counteract the fear, bringing heart, bringing passion. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Spirit. Got to add water. Bringing passion into a new path. The page of um, the page of wands, though, is a, a more juvenile energy. So there is um, what I'm getting from this as far as waiting, and we'll get into the eight of pentacles. A need to wait on like putting. What is? What do you want me to say on that? Falsified hope. Falsified hope. Okay. Um, Ah, okay. Okay. So we're not lying to ourselves. Okay. Thank you, Spirit. Um, as an example, back to the job thing. If this is a situation where something's been taken away from you and you're moving into another job, maybe you did find something and it's like you're telling, you're lying to yourself like, I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't wait to start this job. Um, there's an encouragement to to just, we're not lying to ourselves, Okay. It, there's a difference between like positive mental attitude and working to increase your frequency and lying to ourselves and ignoring what it is we're actually feeling. The reason why this is important not to do is because in this process, as the towers come down, you have got to validate how you're feeling too. That's going to help stop the circus up here as well. So we're validating we're not getting stuck on. This happened to me, right? I lost this job this or that, whatever. So the rug was pulled out from underneath me. This sucks. This hurts. I feel this way. It's so important to recognize those at least in one moment, at least one time, so that those components of yourselves, yourself can quiet down. Otherwise, they're going to just keep screaming. And that makes it 
makes us get to a point where we now need to start talking louder and lying to ourselves over those other voices. No, 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 no. Clear the brush and then plant the crop, okay? Give yourself compassion and then move forward. So the focus, what is important right now, um, eight of pentacles, work. This is, <laughs> this is work. So it could be work for you guys, pile three. Um, this is about uh, the passion that you put towards your work too. And a caution towards burnout. So there is this theme that's coming through. I'm kind of getting the message of like with this tower coming down, absolutely could be triggering root chakra issues. Um, okay, that's why Apophyllite. I'm like, why didn't we get a root stone here then? Apophyllite, it's to help clear the mind and the connection to the divine. And I feel like that's kind of my, or that's what's spinning right now. So with whatever this is that came down, I am getting the feeling that this wasn't something that you actually wanted to do anyway. This isn't somewhere where you had passion. Maybe you were getting burnt out. So this is actually an opportunity to, um, to take a leap of faith. You know, that the fool energy. You are not the fool. You are not being made to be a fool here in this situation, you're being given an opportunity to start something completely new, a radical change. A radical change takes radical acceptance. Thank you, Spirit. Ooh, got the chills on that. Okay, so radical acceptance. I don't think I've actually talked about this yet. Radical acceptance is, um, I think that's exactly what you need. Okay. Radical acceptance is when we are at a point in our life, let's say something like this has happened to you, um, where in order for us to function, we have to at least temporarily accept everything exactly the way it is. Okay. And it's not, um, it's not saying that like, you know, in the long run, once we get back to a place where things are a little bit more stable, we can, we can decide, um, to be more resistant to certain things or whatever, however we want to be. I think it's a good idea to be flexible, period, all the time. But in this situation, radical acceptance um, and radical honesty, too. Being completely honest with yourself about your position, how you feel, what's going on, not getting stuck in that. We're just validating it. Looking at the shadow and then turning our face back to the sun, okay? New moon in Leo. With you accepting everything just the way it is right now, the way your children act, the way your partner acts, the way things are at church in your neighborhood, maybe typically your neighbor pisses you off. This is a time where you're not letting those things get to you. You're telling yourself, I accept everything exactly the way that it is right now. And the reason for that is because you need that energy to create. You need to use all of that other energy to create what has been removed, create something new. Okay. Take or leave it. It's up to you. Um, anything else here on the eight of pentacles, please for pile three, for pile three. Ooh, page of swords. Um, and it did actually, yeah, it did fall out in reverse. Again, I don't, uh, I don't know if I said it this pile. I don't pull reversals, but sometimes they do come through in reverse and I honor that. So with Page of Swords coming through in reverse, Page of Swords is like, um, they're the student of the deck. You need to learn something. and need to pay attention to something mentally. They're so good at learning that um, in their shadow aspect, it can actually start moving over into spying, spying behavior. What I'm getting from this is um, connecting to radical acceptance here. This is not a time for comparisons. It never is. I didn't say that in the general. With the new moon in Leo here too, as we're stepping back into our own power, learning to authentically love ourselves, we're stepping away from the program of comparison because that's what got us into that place in the first place. We were taught how to compare ourselves to others by those around us, our caretakers, our family, friends, people at school, church, neighborhood, whatever. So this is what we're unwinding here. Um, this is not a time to be comparing yourself to others. Stay in your lane in the best possible way. You need you right now. And that's why you're not, 
That's why you're taking on radical acceptance. That's why you're not comparing yourself to where other people are. Okay. If you compare yourself to where you, from where you are to where you want to be, you're going to get nowhere. I think that's a Sarah Bareilles line. Yeah. Taking it one step at a time here. Okay. The tower just came down. Be gentle with yourself. So, um, where this leads, what it's good for, you have seven of pentacles. I really like this actually. So this is something, something is growing. Something will break soil. If you aren't seeing it already, it will soon break soil. There are seeds that have already been planted. So this is going to do with, um, you like, you know, this, okay. You know where you've been planting seeds. Uh, maybe you don't know where you've been planting seeds. There could be a situation where if this is you with the job, um, at the blue, somebody calls you, you know, that you spoke to, I don't know, gave your number out to, told yourself what, told them what field you work in. There may be an offer coming forward where um, they are now hiring in their company. You know what I mean? This shit happens, you guys, especially when we are in a state of fear. This is why it's important not to compare, to radically accept, to come into a present moment so that these opportunities can fold in to meet you. So you don't have to go anywhere. That's possible. That's real. Um, it's a tricky skill to master, though. Tricky little bitch, okay? <laughs> so you're being asked to be patient here. Patience is allowing you to reap the benefits of, of this um, plant, whatever it is that's been planted here. I feel like for some of you, it's an opportunity to... To learn something new. So it could be a career shift. Um, could be in the same field, but you are being asked to take on a different angle, you know, from that field, learning a new skill, something new there. Anything else here for Seven of Pentacles here, please, Spirit? Three of Swords. Oof. And Three of Cups here at the bottom. Okay, so... Three of Swords here, typically, this is about heartbreak and loss. Um, the Seven of Pentacles also, there is a note about it that says, do not focus on what's been lost. There's a component that can mean loss. So having the Three of Swords come through here too, I feel like it's pointing to that message. But this is this is heartbreak where we've, we've been wounded in our heart space. Whatever this tower is that's come down... Um, I imagine that this has emotionally hurt. And this is where it's super important to validate your experience. We're not just picking ourselves up by the bootstraps. I hate that so much because it is so dismissive to being a human being. And it really destroys the ability for us to grow, which is what we're doing here. Pushing ourselves stoically not stoic philosophy philosophy but stoicism the way we use the word now is not healthy there may be times where we need to for a temporary period but it's important to always come back to those emotions or we stay with these swords in our heart so with this coming through our charge is to take these swords out of our heart for ourselves and for the universal heart too because what we experience on an individual level is also being experienced on a collective level. And what is being experienced on a collective level is being experienced on an individual level. So that heartbreak, you're being asked not to grow that, not to focus on that, but you're not ignoring it either. You must validate it. Okay. Um, with the three of cups coming through here at the bottom, this is success, victory, celebrating with your kindred souls your soul tribe, okay? Especially um, at this time, the encouragement here, I'm not saying like, you know, go spend money you don't have or get crazy, whatever. This is encouraging you to find reasons to celebrate, especially if there are no reasons to celebrate. Bringing in moments of joy because you are manifesting moments of joy. So go celebrate yourself, okay? Okay. If you do have friends you can get together with on in that way, you don't have to drink or anything. Just go, go take a day, make the intention of you guys getting together to just celebrate your worth. 
may sound weird for some people, but well, I don't care. That's that's the advice. Um, you guys can do this, okay? It this does not feel, especially out of all of the piles here, this doesn't feel super easy, but you've been given a pretty clear direction, okay, to get through this, and you will get through this. Tap into this magic here too. And the symbol I gave you at the beginning as well, okay? Carry that with you for additional patience, all right? Okay, pile three. I love you guys so much. Thank you for joining me here and um, being a part of this with me. I had a, I had a really good time. So um, I will be getting onto the signs here. Look out for those. Um, feel free to comment here, you guys, on how this applies to you. I love to communicate with you guys when I'm able to and to get to know you guys a little bit better, okay? Take care of yourselves. I know that you can do this. We'll talk soon, all right? Be well.